It is Saturday, December the 2nd, 2011. Uh, there was a really interesting, revealing documentary on graffiti just a couple of days ago, and I thought now would be a good time to summarize some of the graffiti sites in the city of Mississauga that I've been documenting since April 2009. Um, most of the material I've never put up on the internet, either in photographs or in video, and the main reason for that, to be clear, is I know that if any of these uh, writers were to get caught, anything that I might post on the internet would be used against them. And so that's why I try to keep as much of it as possible off the net and just primarily for research. But uh, I thought also that now is the time to start properly reporting on graffiti and also using parts of the documentary that I saw. I believe it was called Bomb It. And I thought one of the best things to do, first of all, is to uh, come to some agreement regarding terms. What I've done is I've highlighted all the terms, I've gone through them, and these are the graffiti terms that I want to read in for the record, seeing how many apply here at the city of Mississauga. I'll start with you, first of all, because uh, there's a really important one, and it's up. And up describes a writer whose work appears regularly everywhere and who is currently writing. So this guy here, Hacker, is up, meaning his graffiti is up, his tags are up, so I guess what happens is as soon as you tag, you're up. That doesn't mean that you're an up artist and seen regularly. However, Hacker here is truly up because he's pretty ubiquitous. You can find his uh, work very small on trucks like for example right there is a hacker on a white cube truck and also he does rather large pieces like this as well so now you know what up is let's go here with the A's and all city what a writer is considered to be when he she is up but this term implies more status than just being up many people can be up but only a select few can be considered all city. Can also refer to a crew instead of just one writer. And in the case of Hacker, he's truly up. He's the prominent writer in Mississauga. And uh, the other one I would say that is quite prominent is MYOH. The two are frequently seen together and they're part of the OGC graffiti crew. So. That's all city. Let's go with back in the day. Back in the day refers to the old days, old school, and when a writer first started writing. Also a hip hop rap term. Old school, let's see what it says about old school. General term used to refer to the early days of writing, more specifically the mid 70s to 82 or 83. Also may refer to hip hop music of this period. Old school writers are given respect for being there when it all started, and specific writers are remembered for creating specific styles. I was the world's first graffiti artist. I started here in Philadelphia, I went to Europe, Japan, Africa, you name it, it's there. And all rules leads back to me. As he did this, his name seemed to grow and grow and grow, and he just became a household name, more or less. 1971, a friend of mine named Cornelius Hosey got killed. The newspapers thought the corn was short for cornbread. And they erroneously announced my death in the newspapers. I went to the Philadelphia Zoo. I wrote in the concession stands. I wrote on the wall where the monkeys at, where the lions is at, on the park benches. I wrote cornbread lids on both sides of the elephant. I got locked up for that. Throw up. Over time, this term has been applied to many different types of graffiti. It is a name painted quickly with one layer of spray paint and an outline. Throw-ups are generally only one or two colors, no more. This is how we do a throw-up. I'm going to show all you new jack motherfuckers out there. First you do your outline, then you fill it in. Using a fat cap, which spreads real quick, as you can see. Now I'm outlining my throw-up. Take me up to a minute or two. Boom. And that's it, baby. It's a wrap. Scrub. 
a certain type of throw up, usually two colors, that is filled very quickly with back and forth lines rather than filled in solid. So I would think that this, I've already mentioned, is a throw up. I also think that this likely qualifies as a scrub because it says it's a certain kind of throw up, usually two colors. In this case, white and black. You can argue that white and black aren't colors. Feel free. And that it is filled very quickly with back and forth lines rather than filled in solid. You can see it's done very, very quickly and likely because we are here in one of the busiest intersections in Mississauga. So uh, when he's doing this, there's always a danger of being caught. So I think that's a scrub. Bite. To copy another writer's style, this is considered a no-no and is looked down upon, even though writers often borrow imagery from cartoons and comics. Blockbuster. Now this I've seen. Big square letters often tilted back and forth and in usually two colors, mainly invented to cover over other people and to paint whole trains easily. Um, I've seen blockbusters. There's a blockbuster at... There's definitely a blockbuster that I won't give the location to at all. And they can be seen like these are sometimes 10 feet high. Really, truly blockbuster. And here's one. Bomb. We didn't call ourselves graffiti writers. Society called us that. We call ourselves bombers. We were in the military. The military ain't got nothing to do with what you guys think. We don't care about you. We're into killing. Burning. Bomb. Prolific painting and marking with ink to cover an area with your tag, throw-ups, etc. A tag is very quick, four seconds, that's it. Very quick and then you're on to a new area. Buff. Any means employed by the transit authority to remove graffiti from trains. The more modern usage is when any graffiti is gone over or removed from any surface, not necessarily from trains. But to be clear, graffiti artist, including Hacker, when he puts this up, he's putting it up because he wants it to be visible. And when it's visible like that, he also knows sooner or later it's going to be removed. This is really interesting. Burn. To beat the competition with your style also refers to a really good piece as in one that burns. Burner. A burner is any piece that has good bright colors, good style, often wild style, and seems to burn off the wall. Now there's the introduction of wild style. So let me read wild style to you right now. Wild style. And I've seen these. These they are just incredible. Wild style. A complicated construction of interlocking letters. A hard style that consists of lots of arrows and connections. Pieces are just, you know, your name done in elaborate letters, whether it's simple style pieces or wild style pieces. You got two color blends, you got either shadow or 3D, you add some designs, maybe a cloud, a trim. So the whole art form is based upon lettering. You know how jazz, he took jazz and they broke it from its classical form and flipped it and started adding bebop to it in different forms. We did the same thing with letters. We took the basic alphabet and stretched it. We took a P, as you see here, and it elongated it here and added extensions here and just added funk to it, like we do to everything. You don't want to lose the basis of the letter, but you want to lose the letter. It's taking your name, your identity, and like exaggerating it. P-O-S-E-T-W-O post two. Wild style really isn't a style of letters, it's a way of life. Okay, let's get that straight right now, yo. And I gotta give a shout out to Tracy 168, the president of the Wild Style crew all the way back in the 70s. So I was wild, don't tell me how to live unless you're ready to die for me. But style, class, I respect you, respect me. So wild style combined as one word became what I live like, who I am. It couldn't be me doing it by myself. It took everybody to believe in a certain way of living. And we reflected it in our graffiti in our letters, and that's how we expressed it. That was wild style. We go up, yo, let's go to the top of the Brooklyn Bridge, let's do a piece right there. That's wild style. Doesn't matter if the letters are all nasty or, you know, flowing with style. No, no, no. It's my name is up on Brooklyn Bridge. You ain't fucking doing that, my man. That's wild style. 
Wild style is considered one of the hardest styles to master, and pieces done in wild style are often completely undecipherable to non-writers. And that is true. I look at them and I say, just engrossed by the complexity of these murals. And you can see that interspersed with all of the geometry and arrows and interlocking pieces are letters. And I mean, I look and I can't tell really what it says. That's how complicated and indecipherable they are. So that was wild style. So now we go back and it's clear that a burner then is any really good piece that burns and, and just kind of shouts off from a wall. Crew, a loosely organized group of writers who also tag the crew initials along with their name. Crew names are usually three letters, many times ending with K, which stands for kings or kills in most cases. Some crew names are just two letters, some are four, it all depends. And I just want to point out, there's the uh, first evidence of the OGC crew, and uh, that's the crew that Hacker and MYOH belong to. MYOH, QUEZ, -E Hacker, looks like WLJM. So uh, th those are, I would think, part of the OGC crew. You've got the KTC crew. KTC. Huge letters at one time. I suspect they did that with rollers. I think that's one thing that both taggers and graffiti artists know, and that is that their stuff is temporary. The more visible it is, the more likely it's going to attract the attention and, and be erased. So why they do it? Well, according to the video, vomit. It's everything from hatred, hatred of the system, and I mean such pure hatred. Hating everything, hating everybody, everything. We call ourselves bombers. We were in the military. The military ain't got nothing to do with what you guys think. We don't care about you. We're into killing. Burning. There's hatred for authority, hatred for others. Public property. That's what we should be riding on. The highways, the buses, the trains. Public. Whatever is paid for by taxes. Bomb them shit. Hit them up. But I do want to say that I have had email conversations with taggers or graffiti artists, I don't know which, they can be both, who actually respect the police. They re respect the police. They don't call them pigs or cops, they call them police officers. And it's, I found that really interesting, that they basically considered police to be just part of the process in fact, an important part of the process, saying if we don't have the potential for being caught by the police, then it isn't graffiti that we're doing. And then the other thing that was really important was they said the potential for being arrested, the potential for running into police is part of the adrenaline rush. And uh, the other thing is, too, that a lot of these writers have, just like this glossary said, have a respect for old school graffiti artists. That they really do have a culture, admittedly not the mainstream culture, but there is a culture, there is a, uh, a, a tradition. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating fascinating world and it's so different from 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 me